King Charles receives the honors of Scotland amid anti-monarchy protests The king receives the honors of Scotland, the country's crown jewels, at a thanksgiving and dedication service held in his honor in Edinburgh. He received the insignia of his power in Scotland the crown, the scepter and the sword of state with pomp, puppetry and prayer for his coronation on May 1. The king and queen later watched an RAF fly past over the Scottish capital, with the Prince and Princess of Wales, known in Scotland as the Prince and Princess of Rothesay from Holyrood House Palace. The red arrows flew over the famous Royal Mile towards Edinburgh Castle to the palace. This was preceded by a 21-gun salute fired from Edinburgh Castle at the end of a service in St. Oller. Earlier, around 200 anti-monarchist demonstrators sat outside the cathedral during a service. The four were subsequently arrested after delivering a vulgar tirade to their majesties. So you thought all the pomp and splendor that the coronation of King Charles accompanied, be over? Not completely Charles was officially installed into the Scottish crown on Wednesday in another lavish ceremony of time-honored tradition and pageantry that marked his accession to the throne. While there were more kilts this time, the Edinburgh ceremony, like its London predecessor, included a procession through the streets and the presentation of the glittering crown jewels, which also have an intriguing history. Also present was the Stone of Destiny, a 330-pound block of rosy sandstone that was almost impossible to lose. The ceremony was not as lavish as the coronation in May, when 2,000 guests gathered at Westminster Abbey to witness Charles's coronation. And since he was already King of Great Britain, the Scottish crown was not placed on his head, but handed over to him. However, for the royal family, it is an extremely important ceremony. After the death of Queen Elizabeth II, Charles took part in a four-nation tour of Britain, and the ceremony was seen as part of the process of strengthening ties with Scotland and preserving the Union. After all, the Scots are less enthusiastic about the monarchy than their English neighbors. People voted almost half for independence some time ago. George Gross, coronation expert at King's College London, said the royal family faces a complex task as they grapple with their historic role in a country ruled by the pro-independent Scottish National Party. The monarchy must always be above politics, even more so at a time of decentralization, with the SNP leading government in Holyrood, he said, referring to the Scottish seat of government. The Scottish crown jewels predate even the English ones used at the May Day ceremony, thanks to very accurate measurements during Oliver Cromwell's turbulent anti-monarchist period in the 17th century. The scepter of and the crown of 1540 are an important part of Scotland's national identity. The fact that they are still there is an amazing story of deceit and bravery. They were first used as the coronation regalia for Mary, Queen of Scots, in 1543 when she was only nine months old. They were also used for the coronations of James VI, later James I of England, and Charles I and Charles II, whose coronation in 1651 was the last in Scotland. When Britain became a protectorate under Cromwell, England's medieval crown jewels were merged with other royal regalia. In Scotland, however, the crown jewels were so carefully hidden that they were not discovered until a century and a half later, in 1818 when writer Walter Scott found them in an oak chest at Scotland Castle. The coronation process in Scotland began with a Shetland pony named Corporal Cruachan IV, the mascot of the Royal Regiment of Scotland, led kings, pipers and mounted guards in shining armour from Edinburgh Castle to St Peter's Church. Idzi where the ceremony took place. Prince William and Catherine, Princess of Wales were there, but as it was Scotland they called her by their Scottish titles Prince and Duchess of Rothesay.